Hello and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. Today's video is start to finish how I make YouTube tutorials. I believe that education is storytelling, right? Basically, my overall process is I figure out what the video is, I do a lot of research, and then I do an outline on an iPad, and then I start to make the slides. I start to actually build the story. I build the animations. How am I going to present this information? I get all that done. There's a lot of time involved in that. Then I'll do a voiceover and then I'll start the edit and uh, then I upload. And so I'm gonna take you through the whole process so you can see what that looks like. So let's get into it. I keep all of my teaching resources in Notion. I love Notion so much. And one of the many things I keep track of are student questions. So after every unit that I teach, I make notes about student questions and problems that come up during lab. And I keep track of the videos that I want to make in the future. And so when I sit down to do research, that's where I start. One good way to think about this is storytelling and also to think about you are leading the viewer on a journey, a journey of knowledge. Sounds so good, right? And you're, you want to start from a comfort zone. So I always start with things that are really, really easy, things that 99% of my viewers already know. So let's start there. And then we start to branch out and we're going to make comparisons and we're going to build out from there. And sometimes we, we backtrack a little bit and it's like, okay, don't be too scared. You know, let, let's look at something that's sort of familiar. And then we branch out again. So I view the storytelling process. It, it's not really so much linear for me. It's more about let's move the viewer into and out of their comfort zone so that they stick with it, right? So that they're inspired to keep going. You want to push them, but don't push them so far and so fast that they're going to give up on you. Now, I have to tell you that coffee is an extremely important part of my process. <laughs> okay, it's another day. And now what I'm going to be doing is taking the notes and the outline that I made on the iPad. And now I'm going to use that as my guide to start building slides in Keynote, which will eventually be the video, right? So I keep the notability slides open and I'm deciding how to sort of present these topics, the concepts, the terminology. I set placeholders. I'm going to be adding images later. And I'm kind of deciding about things like pacing and how I want things to be revealed as the video goes on. I am very aware that most people will be watching this on a small device like a tablet or a phone. So I try to make things as big as possible. I don't use any distractions in the background. I really want to focus on what are the simplest ways that I can express the concepts so that people don't get caught up in details that don't matter. So I am setting up for animations here. I want to use very simple shapes, simple ideas so that people can easily follow along and see the themes that I'm trying to establish. I like to use handwriting um, to break up the video and also to illustrate things like chemical equations or mathematical problems, things like that. I think that watching someone write those things out is really, really effective. One of the most common questions I get, this is a good question, is whether or not I watch a lot of other YouTube videos. And the answer is yes and no. I don't watch videos that are at the same target audience level as the video that I'm going to be making. What I do tend to do is watch videos that are at a lower level. So I'll watch like high school level videos on the topic. And then I watch videos like from med school. And I find that that gives me a really good place to start because then I know where the students are coming from and where they're going next. One other thing about watching other YouTubers is, you know, it's great. You can watch them and you can get inspiration, but don't try and copy someone else's style. Um, that's one of the reasons why I am very cautious about the videos that I watch because I'll see something and I'll think, oh, I love the way they did that. I love that language. I love whatever, but I don't want to copy that. I don't feel that that's my voice. There's definitely a strategy to watching other YouTube videos as you're preparing to make your own. So now the slides are in their almost final form and I've decided 
how I'm going to start this story. This is going to be a comfortable place to start. What is a standard? You know a lot of different standards. And now we're going to introduce moles, right? Most of my students have heard of moles. They're just not super comfortable with them. So now we're going to make some comparisons. We're going to go and make some jokes. There's always penguins in there. And now I'm going to show you what the slide presentation looks like. So here are the animations. I'm going to be making solutions here. So I'm very very aware of the timing, how I'm going to present these different terms, what the animations will look like. I'm making a comparison with something that people already know. And now I'm going to explain the two options of measuring the concentration of that solution. This is sort of, you know, building into what the video is about. Now I'm going to go back and forth between molarity and molality. Here's a little mnemonic to help you remember. There's the coffee. Don't be too scared, right? And now I've got some of that handwriting in here because I think that's the best way to, to look at this. You know, what are the osmoles? I want to point out something here. This whole sequence, really what the video is about, is the difference between these two terms. And I'm very conscious of how I keep both terms on the screen the whole time, but I'm going back and forth between the two. But there's a lot of repetition for the brain to keep looking back and forth, back and forth. How are they similar? How are they different? And now the video finishes with tonicity, and now I'm going to repeat the themes of the solute and the solvent. But now we're just making a little bit more steps forward. What are the different concentration options between the two? But I use the same images, I use the same shapes, and now the brain is just more used to seeing them. These things are now more familiar than they were when the video began. So I try to keep these themes repeating. I keep building on where we've already been, and I always remind the viewer where we're going. I really hate do's and don'ts, but I do have just a couple. One don't is never insult your viewer. Don't ever make someone feel badly that they don't know something. Um, nothing is more demoralizing than that. And the flip side of that is take every opportunity you can to inspire and let people know that they can do it, right? That even though they might think they can't understand something, they can. Hello and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about osmolarity, osmolality, and tonicity. Okay, so now you fill in the blank. You guys got this. So blank is the measure of solute concentration per unit volume. Is it osmolarity or osmolality? So think of that R in liter. You're right, that's osmolarity. You know all about solutions already. We make them every single day. So here's some coffee with sugar in it. And the question is, how sweet do you want your coffee? You see how people can confuse these, right? There's only one letter difference between them. Now for me, recording the video is actually the easiest part. I usually get what I want within the first few takes. Uh, so editing is not so bad for me. Um, I know for a lot of people, editing is just a living nightmare. It really depends on how much footage you have, right? Because the more footage you have, the more you have to go through and cut and paste. Um, there is an art to this. It requires its own video to talk about. But yes, editing will suck the life out of you sometimes. There's an issue of when is it finished? And I really wish that I could tell you that. Um, I think, especially for those of you who are perfectionists, uh, this is really one of the most difficult things about making a video because you could always make it better. But there is kind of a relationship between the amount of time that you spend on the video, especially in the editing process, and how much better the video gets because of that editing. So in the beginning, you put in some time and the video gets a lot better. But then if you keep putting in more and more and more time, it's kind of like the law of diminishing returns, right? It's just not worth it anymore. And practice will tell you where that inflection point is, basically when to stop. There has to come a point where you say, it's good enough, and you upload. But there really is no recipe. You have to find your own style, your own voice, and that just takes practice. So my number one recommendation is start making videos. Don't wait until you're ready. Don't wait until you have the perfect gear set up. Don't wait until you feel perfectly inspired. 
you just got to push record. That was a lot. Okay, so I hope that that was helpful. If you want to see more videos like this, please check out the EdTech playlist, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.